Hello and welcome everybody. It's your boy King Dems here. We are back for another scores on the doors. I decided that I was going to do scores on the doors for these RMRs because let's be honest, they're one of the biggest events of the year. Yes, I know it's basically just a major qualifier. However, regardless of it being a qualifier, like I say, it's actually one of the biggest events of the year. And even the prize money on offer is no joke. That's pretty decent and it's on land and all of that good stuff. So I thought, yeah. You know, it probably deserves the scores on the doors. So let's get it done. We're not going to talk too much about the lower teams on this list. Um, I will say like a couple of words about like obviously OG, Fnatic and Mouse just because I think they have underperformed in a lot of eyes. But if you don't know the format of scores on the doors by now, go and look at one of the other ones, right? Or just stick around and watch this one and figure it out for yourself. Yeah, Quasar, we're just going to give a C. Expected to get banged out, got banged out. Uh, Game of Legion, I'm going to give a C again. Not much expected of them. And Unique, I'm going to give a C. Nothing much expected of those three teams, and that's exactly what happened. They didn't really get anything done. Now, this Fnatic lineup, do you know what? I'm I'm actually going to give them a, a C-. I didn't expect them to qualify, right? I, I'll be honest, if you look at the teams that did qualify, the only two you'd be like, raising an eyebrow about potentially are eternal fire and forza and i don't think Fnatic are better than either of those teams so i expected Fnatic not to qualify as per my predictions video and they didn't um i think they looked a little bit worse than i was even expecting them to so that's the reason i gave them a c minus but yeah they were about in line with my expectations so nothing too much there Dignitas, going to give a c minus they might have hoped to be a bit more competitive um og <sighs> I think OG have to get an F for this, honestly. Um, they should have been qualifying for this. Um, they definitely should be qualifying ahead of Forza and Eternal Fire. And yeah, it's just really not good enough. Um, this was the harder of the two RMRs probably. But still, if you look at the team list, they still should have been able to make it. And um, yeah, some of the results, they obviously lost to Forza in a best of one. Not good from OG, so yeah, they're getting an F. They definitely should have qualified, and they didn't. It, it can't be considered as anything other than a, a pretty abject failure. Mouse, uh, yeah, they're going to get a D- minus from me. Again, they should have qualified. I was expecting more from both Mouse and OG than I was Fnatic, for example, and uh, they, none of them did anything of note, so pretty disappointing. Um, and yeah, another, just I'm not convinced that this removal of mbk addition of jdc is going to be a good thing in the long term for mouse i think again they're going to lack a lot of leadership within the team it's a very very young lineup and not even in terms of the talent i think the talent on the roster is fine it's just i don't see a good leadership structure here and i think they're probably going to struggle because of that um but yeah just disappointing here what did i say d minus yeah it's not great so are actually going to get a B plus from me. Um, they were very, very competitive. And basically, it came down to the absolute finest margins versus outsiders. I think Saw, a more experienced Saw, i.e. a Saw that have played a little bit more against these tier one teams, probably would have got it over the line in that series. Um, absolutely heartbreaking for them, but they had a massive qualifier, can really, really hold their heads up high. And they showed a lot of people a very positive side to Iberian uh, Counter-Strike. So... They can only be pleased, I think, of what they have done for themselves, how they represented their country and their region. And hopefully in the future, we can see soar at more of these type of qualifiers, maybe even see them get some chances at like Katowice qualifiers and play into those types of events. Um, great qualifier for soar. Unlucky not to make it in the end. Now we get on to the teams that did qualify and we'll look at their runs in a little bit more depth, starting with Outsiders. Now, good old fashioned Outsiders paid by the round. And uh, yeah, they, they started to kind of make that happen towards the end. I think it's difficult to say exactly where Outsiders are in the kind of hierarchy of the world. If we actually go and have a look at their ranking come into them, they're obviously number nine. They were the fourth highest ranked here. So you, you probably would have expected them to qualify pretty comfortably. However, obviously, if we look at their record, they did make a bit of a meal of qualification. Losing to Big on Dust 2, Big are so good on that map, and I think too many teams allowed Big to get Dust 2 in the veto in this qualifier, which is why Big were able to kind of be as, as convincing as they were. They got it in this best of three. 
uh, against FaZe, and but we'll talk about big later. Yeah, outsiders are difficult to peg. Losing to big and mouse, you'd be like, whoa, if you're losing to big and mouse relatively comfortably, then you're probably going to have a hard time making it through this qualifier. Um, and then obviously they had a uh, best of three against Dignitas, which in itself wasn't easy going, as you can see. The Inferno that they won went to overtime. They lost the Mirage. So even that was not a very convincing win. And I would say Dignitas, they weren't as bad as I was expecting to look at this qualifier. But let's be honest, they're not one of the elite of Counter-Strike. And then this best of three against Saw, as you can see, they went the full 30 on Dust 2, just about squeaked it, lost Ancient, and then just squeaked Inferno with some crazy moments. You know, we'll all remember that final round that got them to overtime where James gets hit by a no scope it legs him he just about makes the bomb in time for defusal it, it was all just crazy and um yeah outsiders they they showed a lot of resilience to kind of make it and squeak through but i'll be honest i think i've got to give them a c minus at, at best i'm gonna give them i think a c minus because whilst they did qualify they did it by the skin of their teeth. I would have expected them to do it more convincingly. The fact that they got big and then Mal's in best of ones, I think both of those should be winnable best of ones for outsiders. Admittedly, they let the big one go to dust two, which I think is just a, a mistake in the veto. But yeah, I, I'm not super convinced of how good outsiders are at the moment. And I think potentially that team is probably not long for this world, that five-man lineup. There's rumours about various different moves potentially happening within the CIS scene. Um, obviously, we've seen Gambit or players get bought out by C9, as in the lineup get bought, I should say. And I'll talk about that in a separate video. But there's a lot going on, I think, in the CIS scene behind the scenes right now. And um, yeah, I wonder if after this major, we're going to see some lineups change. Um, and I'm not sure if this outsider's lineup will survive, but... We'll have to wait and see. Eternal Fire get themselves. What do they get themselves? So let's look at their running specifically. Obviously losing to FaZe, no shame or harm in that. It's probably about expected. Uh, a tight overtime win against Dignitas. Okay, they get the job done. Uh, not super convincing because, again, I don't think Dignitas are that great. So if you're kind of not able to comfortably put Dignitas to bed, I'd say I'm probably a little bit worried about you for the rest of the qualifier. They lose to Vitality, okay, again, probably expected, but Vitality themselves aren't even in the greatest of spots right now. So you get to this point where best Eternal Fire are going into the best of threes, and I'm not, like, all that convinced, I'll be honest. I was like, yeah, okay, maybe they squeeze a best of three against Fnatic, but I didn't, wouldn't have expected them beforehand to beat OG, but in the end, it, it, it was, you know, two maps. Yes, they both went the distance, Eternal Fire earned their spot, to be honest. I think they maybe got a tad fortunate, let's say, with the draw. Just because I think of who you maybe could have played. You played... Okay, FaZe is a tough opener, for sure. No worries about that. Vitality in the 1-2 game, probably one of the harder... Or the 1-1 game, sorry. Probably one of the harder 1-1s that they could have got. But then I think get coming to the best of threes, getting Fnatic and then getting OG for the decider. They got two teams that I think underperformed in this qualifier. They got two teams that I think of the tier one are looking very vulnerable right now. Um, but ultimately, Eternal Fire had to beat what was put in front of them. I had these guys pegged as not making it because I thought they would lack where their firepower was not enough to just blast them through the group i thought they would struggle but ultimately they did very well and i think they deserve nothing but praise um the couple of caveats i will say the town of fires map pool didn't really get tested they basically got to just play vertigo overpass and dust two uh their vertigo was very good their overpass and dust two were like okay ish the overpass against phase they got absolutely spanked so, yeah, they kind of squeaked through without having their map pool tested all too much. And I think they were also very, very reliant on Xantares for just fragging overall and just playmaking and stuff like that. If we actually go to opening kills again, Xantares is the guy 
who's actually got the highest opening rating and he's taking a good chunk of their attempts alongside Emor. So if I was to have a, a major criticism about this Eternal Fire run, it would probably be twofold. It would be one, the map pool was not really tested and two, which by the way, the map pool isn't always going to get tested in, in qualifiers and events like this. I understand that. It's just the nature of the way it works. You had quite a few best of ones and only one map can come through. So you you, you have more agency about forcing it to one or two particular maps and then you know when you're only playing two best of threes and you know one of them doesn't even go all the way okay i understand the map pool maybe isn't going to get tested just because of the circumstances but the other criticism i would have is that like i say i think very very reliant on zantares and outside of zantares they were kind of struggling for like playmaking for star potential in fact i think it almost it, my criticism or my doubt of eternal fire before this of the if their individuals weren't good enough to just outskill the opponent they'd struggle almost bore out because only Zantares was the guy who was still kind of consistently performing to a very high level and i think the others were struggling to kind of outskill their opponents the way they would in tier two but you know all of that aside eternal fire did really well to make it through this qualifier and so yeah they they get a b from me they exceeded expectations um well done to eternal fire great to have a turkish representative at the major next up we have vitality and honestly vitality were one of the teams i was worried about um of the top teams just because I do think they are really struggling to find their feet as a team. This Danish-French marriage has not gone very well thus far. But they did the business that they needed to get done in this qualifier. They actually ran phase very close on that Mirage. And it was close as well. That 16-14 is reflective of how the game went. So they could have actually maybe even made it through as one of the 3-0 teams. Ultimately, I think this major qualifier, they did look improved from previous events. Um, obviously, they, they did lose to Na'Vi in the best of three, and it was somewhat close. They were both 16-13s, but I think if you saw Na'Vi during this event, there was a lot of arguing going on when they were playing their games. There was a lot of, I think... I don't know if animosity is the right word, maybe a bit of tension within the team. I think a full strength Na'Vi, this probably isn't that close. And ultimately, Na'Vi has kind of slipped back into being the simple show again, which Na'Vi are not at their best when it is just simple going off. And I mean, if Boomich is the second highest rated player, then I think there's something wrong with that Na'Vi team, to be honest. If Bit and Electronic aren't up here with simple, then... Yeah, I think you've got to ask questions about how good Na'Vi are at that moment in time. And then this series from Vitality against Mouse was actually very, very close. Obviously, um, they got beaten on Nuke, which is something that... That's interesting because I think both the French and the Danish... Well, at least Apex and then the Danish uh, portion of that squad. I think both have been good on Nuke in the past and... Ugh, Nuke being such a shaky map for this Vitality probably is more of a testament to the difficulty mid-rounding and the difficulty in communications with playstyle, but I digress. The Mirage, which they won 16-13, was very, very close and actually probably could have gone either way. Um, some, some key moments in that game went Vitality's way and actually ultimately on that Mirage Dupree kind of bailed them out and and he actually did a great clutch in a post plant to um to secure the qualification for them so I think what I'm basically trying to say is that this Vitality run wasn't wholly convincing Dig and Eternal Fire they should be beating Mouse they should be beating as well they kind of got a draw where it was like they proved they weren't as good as the elite teams because they got beaten by FaZe and Na'Vi they proved they were better than some of the other teams in this qualifier. Dignitas and Eternal Fire, who probably would have been in the kind of lower half of the power rankings for most people in this qualifier. And then Mouse, yeah, super close. Mouse were sort of on that cusp where they weren't a bad team at this qualifier, but they just couldn't seem to get themselves over the line. So I think Vitality get themselves a C. I think they they just they just fulfilled expectations, to be honest. Um, the expectations at least I had for them going in. 
and I don't expect them to get much done at the major, but they've made it, and that's the most important thing. So, yeah, C for Vitality. It was fine. Next up, we have Forza, and Forza are going to get a B plus from me. I actually expected Forza to qualify, but I think most people wouldn't have, to be honest. So I'm not going to put Forza's expectations as being, yeah, you qualify. Not only did they qualify, they made it as one of the 3-1 teams. Admittedly, they got a soft draw. They got a Gamer Legion, who are not great. They got a Saw in their qualification bout, who are... Yeah, Saw proved themselves to be a competitive team at this RMR, but, you know, you still would expect to probably at least... Let's put it this way. Forza beat Gamer Legion, they beat OG in a best of one, and they beat Saw in a best of three. You would probably expect to have to make a major to have to have a better run than that and beat better teams than that. Regardless, Forza were actually very, very convincing. If we go, if obviously, if we look at this saw best of three, it was very convincing. But if we go back here, this 1917, this overtime against OG, they actually probably should have won this game in regulation. OG were bailed out by a monstrous performance by Mantu. Forza played a way better Dust2 than OG. And there's actually a VOD review on my channel you can go and check out. The Forza are legit video. I was really impressed with the way Forza played. I think they improved as the event went on, and I am really looking forward to seeing them at the major. I think Jerry calls a fantastic game, particularly his T sides are something to behold. The amount of times he guesses the opposition correctly and he finds the gaps are staggering. That guy, he is fucking universe brain, Jerry. And just the fact this guy keeps taking CIS youngsters, taking them to majors, improving them, and building that CIS scene and, and the depth of talent, it, it's just unreal. And Jerry deserves so much credit. Shalfi looked really good. Norvi looked really good at points. Like, it just looks like they got some skilled youngsters there, and we know how good Zorta is. So, yeah, I'm actually looking forward to seeing this Forza at the major. And they get a B-plus from me. Not so much looking at the run and whatnot, but just looking at the way they played, considering they're such a young team, this was the first chance at a major for most of them. Yeah, they get a lot of credit and they're going to get a B plus from me. I think it was a good performance. Na'Vi are going to get a C plus. They, they hit the mark, right? They qualified, beat Quasar and OG in best of ones. Losing this best of three to Heroic is probably a little bit disappointing because I think Na'Vi have proven to have Heroic's number in these LAN best of threes. If we go down, can we actually see the... Yeah, as you can see, Na'Vi win, Na'Vi win, Na'Vi win, Na'Vi win. All the way back to like ESL Pro League Season 14, it's all Na'Vi wins in these series. Um, so I think finally losing a series to heroic is probably a little bit disappointing and again it kind of comes down to it was the simple show again nobody else was really showing up with him there is definitely something wrong with navi obviously there's um issues going on behind the scenes with the russian invasion of ukraine and what's going to happen with the team and are the russians going to relocate is navi the org going to be able to continue supporting them all sorts of questions surrounding this team. But in the end, um, they did make it through. They beat the teams that were put in front of them. I think they proved with this heroic loss that they're not quite at that like elite level form. But they are above the normal cut of tier one, I think. I think they're up there with kind of, I would say, sort of phase and heroic are like two of the best teams in the world right now. Heroic obviously collapse in those big games, but, you know, in a normal kind of qualifier like this, Heroic are going to be the, like, top four kind of Heroic. And I think Na'Vi showed that they're just a little bit short of that right now. Um, but with expectations going in, they're expected to qualify. They did a decent job of it. You would have said before the qualifier that having OG Heroic Vitality is sort of your, like, last best of one and then your two best of threes is not the easiest draw in the world so yeah i'm gonna give navi a c plus mostly the c for qualifying and then the plus just because simple is absolutely banging out and i love to see simple doing just dirty things on the server being the goat that we know he is yeah that's basically the only reason they get the plus because i fucking love watching simple wreck people
FaZe. Yeah, FaZe just get a C plus again. They qualified. They lost in the best of three to big, which is probably disappointing. But they beat what was put in front of them. It was pretty much no dramas, no thrills for FaZe. There was never really any threat of them not getting through. This Mal's best of three was pretty convincing. Beat them on both picks. No issues there. As I said, the big result is probably a bit disappointing for them, but big are probably actually the best team in the world on Dust2. They're so fucking good on that map. Uh, it, probably a little bit disappointing to lose Mirage, but obviously Crimbo was a bit of a revelation at this event for big, but we'll talk about him in a moment. So yeah, FaZe, I think they just get a C+, plus, um, just because they fulfilled expectations solidly. Um... The only, like I say, downside was the big series, and that was somewhat understandable. So yeah, C plus for phase, whatever. No dramas, mate. We got the boys in big. They have to get like an A, to be honest. They were the big surprise of this RMR. Absolutely smashed through it. Punted sore in the bone piece, but that was totally expected. To be honest, um, I was surprised how competitive Saw were for the rest of the RMR. This is more what I expected to happen than to just get banged down by everyone. They banged out Outsiders, got Dust 2. So, like, we have to say, okay, yeah, Big, you got your best map against a team who are not in their best form right now. But they 2 owed phase, which was fairly legitimate. Again, they got Dust 2. I don't think you can let Big have Dust 2 because it is by far their best mag. Mag? <laughs> map. But you you just have to say fucking fair play to Big because they, they smashed this. And if we actually go, let's have a look. Uh, stats. Uh, let's add Big to the old context. Uh, and if we look here, bam. Crimbo, what a fucking revelation he was. But the whole of the Big team played well. This, this here. Crimbo, Sears and Tamsin like this with these stats. This is what Big need to be a great team. This is perfect. Habson, he's your in-game leader, but we know he's skilled. Let him be the middleman. Searson and Crimbo, you guys go be the stars. And if we have a look at opening kills again, this is looking roughly how you'd want it. You know, a relatively even amount of kind of opening attempts, but your AWP has been very high success with the attempts he's taking. Your two sort of better players are taking a good chunk of the openings and being pretty successful. This is just what you want. This is how you want things to look. The thing is, is yeah, look, they got two Dust Twos and they won both of them. They got a Mirage, which they won. They got an Agent, which they won. So their map pool again, it's going to happen in these qualifiers sometimes. It's not going to get tested. So I reserve judgment. If they'd have got one less Dust Two, who knows how it would go. You just don't let Big have Dust Two, guys. Just don't, don't, don't let him have it. It's a really good map for them. Just be smart. Get big off dust too. But yeah, I, just to summarise, big getting A. Really well played. Crimbo looking great. Excited to see if big can continue looking this good going into the major. And the final heroic, they are going to get a B plus from me. I think expected to beat Forza, expected to beat Fnatic pretty reasonable draw as the two best of ones to get two teams who i would have put in the bottom half of my power rankings going into things but then they got navi in the best of three and they did really well to beat navi in a pretty well contested series they broke a bit of a hoodoo that navi have had over them in recent times so I think all I can do is give heroic credit for the way they played in the in the RMR. They put everyone they needed to to bed. They beat the teams that were put in front of them, and they did so with relatively minimal fuss. Looked good doing it. If we go back to look at the stats, and we'll look at them with the old heroic context on. Blam a blow blow. Uh, I don't know what the fuck that noise was. Uh, but yeah, here we have it, and uh, bam. Yeah, just Starvin going ham, which is what you want. Tess and Refresh up there. This is what you want. I think these are the kind of... This is the star trio. You're expecting Starvin to have, like, superlative numbers. Tess and Refresh to have good numbers. Get a lot of fragging done. Be a bit playmaky. Kadian and Shush are more the stable guys that provide the supportive structure behind. And if we look in opening kills, this is what I want to see. I want to see Refresh and Tess. I want those to be the highest attempts. I want them to have a good rating. And yeah, it's just looking good for Heroic. The problem is, is we know what Heroic's problem is. Is it's when they get to the important games, they have a little bit of a uh, struggle. 
they have a bit of a struggle they seem to disappear in important games in playoffs in big stadium events which is what the major will be let's hope that by the time this rolls around they're going to have gotten over that hump somewhat but yeah they get a b plus for this rmr performance it was good it was not like amazing spectacular wow that's an a it was just solid stuff and well played that is all from me folks for scores on the doors for the rmr a i will also be doing a video for the rmr b and that should be coming out tomorrow remember the like button what else comment that's good too uh tell all of your best friends about me and how wonderful i am and if you did not like it just fucking stop watching you weirdo what how are you at the end of the video if you didn't like it freak